From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the New News. I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our midweek forecast, plus a Montana town wants to be a safe haven for the unborn, ramping up the abortion debate. But first, our top stories. The economy took center stage during President Joe Biden's State of the Union address last night. The speech is sparking strong and varying reactions from Montana's congressional delegation. MTN's Jonathan Amberian reports. Democratic Senator John Tester released a video statement praising Biden for what he laid out in the address. Appreciate the fact that the president talked about uh, what he was going to do lower costs for working families and small businesses and how he's going to fight inflation, how he's going to continue to take care of our veterans in a way that our veterans deserve. I hope he continues to work with folks uh, on both sides of the aisle, particularly in areas like the southern border, which needs some attention. Uh, particularly in areas like China, uh, as we saw this last weekend with a balloon that floated over the United States. But Republican Senator Steve Daines was sharply critical. On Twitter, he accused Biden of misleading the American public and said, quote, Joe Biden could have promised in this speech he would stop the reckless government spending that is breaking the bank for folks in Montana and across the country, but he didn't because he won't. Republican Congressman Ryan Zinke also pushed back, saying in a statement, quote, Montanans deserve to hear a lot more from President Biden at the State of the Union, but unfortunately, this is exactly what we have come to expect. He did everything but admit our country is worse off than it was before he took office, and the things he did admit were worse he blamed on other people. In 2022, Congressman Matt Rosendale didn't attend the speech because he objected to the COVID restrictions. This year, the Republican was in attendance and released a video response on Twitter. It was uh, just a fairy tale. We didn't hear anything about the uh, record high inflation. We didn't hear anything about the record high energy costs. We did not hear an acknowledgement of the record high crossings of illegal immigrants that we have coming across the southern border. And we heard some kind of vague story about the Chinese and how they are able to work with us and no acknowledgement of the spy balloon that was just shot down over our country. It's quite disappointing, quite frankly. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. The Montana Senate had a heated debate Tuesday as it considered a bill that would ban gender-affirming procedures for transgender youth. I'm going to ask one more time. Let's leave that language out of this discussion. There's no place for it here. There's language on this floor that gets used all the time that I don't necessarily approve of, but... I don't think anybody here is breaching decorum by the simple fact that we're using terms and making analogies. The exchanges began with arguments over appropriate language for describing the procedures. After more than an hour of debate, the session was briefly delayed over a rules dispute. After that, Democratic leaders tried to ask for a vote to postpone the bill. Eventually, they withdrew that motion, and the Senate approved SB 99 on a preliminary vote. With 28 Republicans in favor and five Republicans joining all 16 Democrats in opposition. Supporters said gender-affirming procedures can create long-lasting effects that children shouldn't have the ability to consent to. Opponents said it was infringing on families' rights to make medical decisions and keeping transgender youth from medically approved treatment. The bill must pass a final vote in the Senate before moving to the House. In other political news, Montana's U.S. Senator Steve Daines is out of Twitter jail today. His account suspended Monday, according to a report in The Hill, that account and profile picture were blacked out and a note on the profile said the account was suspended for violating Twitter's sensitive media policy. Danes had posted a profile picture of he and his wife with an antelope his wife had harvested. Twitter CEO Elon Musk responded on the platform and said the issue was being fixed and the policy being changed. The account and image were restored by late Tuesday morning and Danes thanked Musk. Relief in northern Wyoming after a missing snowmobiler was found alive. The 57-year-old Sheridan County man didn't return after a trip in the Bighorn Mountains. He was able to make a cell phone call to report that he was stuck in waist-deep snow. More than two dozen personnel joined the search, with the missing man finally being located after being spotted from a private citizen's personal helicopter. 
We're going now to Livingston, where the second large fire in six months broke out at a local lumber yard. It took six hours for firefighters to put out flames at RY Timber Sawmill. Monday night, RY had just been given the green light to rebuild the, pla the planing building, which burned last year. Around 90 people are employed there. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Horses in a fourth Flathead County facility have tested positive for a contagious virus following a trend that has experts sounding the alarm. The Montana Department of Livestock is extending the recommendation for limiting travel and canceling equine events in the valley through February 17th. In the latest case of equine herpes virus, the animal was killed due to the severity of the disease. The animal was boarded at a public facility, prompting the department's response. It was a tough day for the Missoula County Sheriff's Office as deputies bid farewell to one of its canine officers. Deputy Loki was part German Shepherd, part Malinois, and became partners with Deputy Ross Jessup in 2016. Deputy Jessup was by Loki's side when he passed due to a progressive disease this morning. Loki was born in Hungary and was eight years old. And that's a look at some of the day's top stories. A good, happy hump day to you and yours. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's start off with conditions and temperatures for uh, the 48th, the continental U.S. Uh, today, we're looking at a high of 49 in Seattle with, uh, it looks like dry conditions for your area after seeing some rain yesterday. Portland, though, still got some rain in your area, getting up to about 50. Looking good along the west coast from San, uh, San Francisco down to uh, Los Angeles. Temperatures in the 60s, maybe even 70 in Los Angeles. With lots of sunshine today. Heartland, Kansas City, up to 46 today with a good bit of rain. Uh, St. Louis, you'll get into the mid to upper 40s with some rain showers. Down near Memphis, we do have a slight risk of seeing some severe weather. We'll keep an eye on that, maybe even some tornado activity as you push down into Mississippi. All right, so your headlines for the 48s, the northern and central Rockies, northern and central plains, we've got some snow. Parts of the lower Mississippi Valley, slight risk of excessive rainfall and severe thunderstorms. And parts of the northeast, pockets of rain and freezing rain. Cold front making its way through. How long will it last? I'll let you know coming up. There's been plenty to look at in the sky around Billings lately, and now you can add these Black Hawk helicopters to the list. The Montana National Guard is making the Magic City its new home for full-time helicopter operations. Yes, that was a Black Hawk you saw above Billings last week, and no, you don't need to be worried. With everything else that was going on in the national news media with, with the Billings area, there's a lot of speculation of of what we were doing here. The helicopter's arrival has actually been in the works for a while. With the only other Montana Army Aviation Support Facility in Helena. There's a, a large capabilities gap area here in eastern Montana and the western Dakotas, northern Wyoming. A new limited aviation support facility on Airport Road is here to change that, complete with four Blackhawks and 13 full-time National Guard staffers. It's really twofold for us is provide that capability to the people of the, the area here, but then also allow people to come in and join our organization and do exactly this, do what we're doing. Major Dustin Horswell commands the unit. He says their primary mission is to train to win any battle they're called into, which can sometimes be in their own backyard. Last summer, guard helicopters had to rescue multiple people during record flooding in Carbon and Stillwater counties. I think it was 60 some people they actually hoisted up and uh, a couple dogs, they didn't want to leave the dogs behind. This group just completed their first drill training over the weekend. And there's still plenty more to do. People will see us a lot more often now. Just in case any more suspicious balloons come our way. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News.